Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Today's tip is on using lens blur to sort of refocus a photo that's already been shot uh, to make it either more dramatic or more pleasing to what you're going for. Uh, I personally use this tip a lot of times to blur out backgrounds so that it makes it easier for text to read over top of. Because uh, in an instance like this, if you were to flow some type over top of this background, um, it just gets kind of noisy and harder to read, especially when you have thinner fonts. Um, and that's just because the photo's really busy and it'd be better if it was uh, a lot more smooth back there. So with that in mind, if you have any photo where you would have liked a little more depth of field or liked it to be a little more artistic, uh, well, all you need to do is separate out the elements you want with a layer mask. So I've kind of gone about that ahead of time here. Um, this is the original photo. I have separated out the TV because that's the portion we're going to focus on. Uh, so this layer here, I'm just going to call TV and then layer zero, we can just call this the background. So once I have the layer that I want to stay in focus figured out, I just click that, go up to filter, pick blur, and then pick lens blur. Um, and if you use this instead of Gaussian blur, it actually looks a lot more accurate to the way of like a camera would react. So usually when you load this up, you're kind of like, well, what's going on here? This isn't helpful at all. But if you switch your source for the depth map to your layer mask, you can see now it's got the TV blurring out in the background staying um, in focus. Just hit invert. So now we've got the opposite of our layer mask. Uh, and you can see that as you ramp up the radius on that focal distance, it really starts to blur the photo in a way that's similar to what a camera would do. Um, and the more that you mess with that blade curvature and rotation and brightness and things, you can start to see it blow out in a similar way uh, to the way that a camera would if the aperture were open longer. Um, and it really just provides a much more accurate interpretation of how a lens would have blurred in this scenario as opposed to trying to fake it with a Gaussian or some other type of motion blur. Um, you can also add noise, which generally happens the longer you have the um, camera lens open. Uh, you get grain in your photos. Anybody who's taken a digital camera photo should know that. Um, and really, all you have to do is just kind of mess with it here, dial in exactly what you want, um, it even gives you some options here for the type of uh, the way the lens reacts to the light with either hexagon, triangle, and so forth. You can just zoom in, kind of play with what you think uh, to get a feel for the look you're going for. Um, obviously, if you know the camera that it was originally shot on, by all means, use that instead uh, so that it's more accurate. But I usually just go in here and kind of poke around. Uh, obviously, the longer the focal distance, the less you see the effect. And the shorter the focal distance, the more there is the effect. So I'm just going to say that that's what I want. Hit OK. And so now it doesn't appear that anything's happened, but that's because this layer mask is what's preventing us from seeing that effect. So at this point, you can throw the layer mask away or just duplicate your layer um, and delete that off. So now I've got a layer with the TV still in focus and the background blurred. Um, and you can even just mess with other things like grab a regular layer mask on this and maybe you want to keep it blurry back here but not up here um, and just do something like that so you can see that i'm basically using that blurry photo with the tv in focus and fading it down over top of the original and suddenly it looks like this was photographed with a much more severe depth of field uh, and it's convincing in a way that just gaussian blur and motion blur and all these other family of blurs under here are not so that's the tip. It really is just a, a great way of using lens blur to kind of manipulate your image in such a way that it just allows you a lot more creative freedom even after the camera has long since been put away. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of tutorials, feel free to subscribe or hit the bell icon to stay notified. As always, if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.